Hello fellow RPG makers and welcome to another video. In the previous videos you have seen me use note text a couple of times. The preload charts was used in the part 9 of the main tutorial series and the states was used in video 2 of the Windows tips and tricks. However, I have never really talked about the note text in detail, so I would like to dedicate this video to the note text. Now, it won't be a fully fledged tutorial because there is not too much to say about note text, so instead I'll more or less talk about the practical side of the note text, how to kind of uh, deal with them properly, etc. So, a note text. As you probably know, if you have watched the tutorial series, is just a string, do, and it doesn't matter what I input here, even if I do the array brackets, one, do, g, and close it, hit OK, new game. Now data uh, skills for dot meta. As you can see, the do is a string. So we, of course, need to parse it. And in previous videos, you have seen me use the uh, the string methods like replace to get rid of the first space, and then I split the string to an array by a uh, by a comma and a space however if you have a simple uh, simple array like this then there might be a simpler method and that is json dot parse data skills for dot meta dot do and now as you can see, the uh, node stack was parsed into an array, or as an array, where the first member is 1 and the second member is uh, a string. And it is important to note that you have to, uh, if you want to use the json.parse, you have to keep it in this format. If I, oops, if I, for example, delete the quote marks from the duke the json dot parse suddenly won't know what to do with, with with this so if i save this and restart the game new game and try to parse it again suddenly it will crash because as you can see unexpected token d in json at position 5 and if we oops if we go to database to the beginning 0 1 2 3 4 5 this is the D because since it does not have any quote marks it doesn't treat it as a string and it doesn't know what kind of a literal is it so you need to have the quote marks also you have to know that you cannot parse an array inside an array unless you do it manually if I do this then it will crash as well due to unexpected token U because it does not know how to deal with these brackets inside an array. So that will be the JSON.parse. This is the only way to use it. Let's discard the changes. And that also means that it will not work for these two since this does not have the brackets, although it could be re re reworked for these brackets. Here I can then just use JSON parse on it instead of what I used. However, if I have a node tag like this, where I have multiple values that each of them have, uh, have additional var values, it will not work because this will get treated as a string and I would need to parse it once more. So it is pointless to use json.parse on a more complex arrays because 
I would essentially need to use additional string methods to parse it further. Like for example, let's go to database to states and let's create a state that will, I will not implement it, I will just demonstrate what you or how you should deal with, with uh, node tags that are supposed to contain code. Let's say node tag effects damage multiply damage reduce shout full because why not now since they are simple effects we can even use the json.parse and in input uh, put them in an array like this So now let's go to the script and now let's define a generic function. I, will, I am not implementing it, I am just using it to, to show or demonstrate function parse node stack code of and accept node stack. Uh, return json dot parse node tag and now there would be somewhere depending on uh, for example you could want, you could have it in battle or somewhere else you would have a function that would then take the node tag and trigger all parameters one by one and you would go like this so function execute node stack uh, node stack effect or effects node stack for var i in node stack execute node stack effect, node stack i function execute node stack effect equals uh, node stack no, effect and here you would do switch you could go if effect equals blah 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 but if and else are if uh, they are in larger numbers they are slower then switches so if for example you have thousand effects it is much better to use switches than to use if and else and of course i don't mean game switches but javascript switches so switch effect oops case here we have what damage multiply call your function, uh, dm function, and break case damage radius. Call your dr function, break case shout pool call your esf function break and for any case we forget to define we also need a default state throw new error effect plus effect plus is not defined please define it and now I will not save or playtest this because this is not an implementation this is just a demonstration of how roughly would you do it the advantage of this compared to Yenfly's node stacks 
is that this is already defined and compiled so the uh, the the machine will not waste time compiling the code and it will only execute the code so it is much faster okay so that will be it for this video if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and i'll see you in the next video bye bye